Well, Gerald Salente, three, four years ago, said World War III could be coming. Nobody else was really saying that at the time. I remember his Trends Journal. He's so good at it, he'll probably, uh, without me even giving him time to do it, pull up the quotes. But I remember in his Trends Journals three, four years ago, he kept harping that when the economy starts to go down, they take us to war. And this time, China, maybe even Russia or vice versa. And I'm not saying China and Russia don't have their own corrupt problems. It's the exact same type of oligarchies. But the West is pushing it all. And the very same West is screwing us over. At least a long time ago, corrupt empires took care of their own people, generally. And the spoils came back to Rome. The spoils came back to uh, London. The spoils came back uh, to Oosterbeck. But they don't even come back now. The globalists sell us out to other dictators, but then also try to keep them in check with military forces. So we got Bilderberg 2015 with the TPP in the background. We've got global government being exposed, these corporate combines, these illegal lobbying groups coming out. Uh, we've got the stock markets in trouble, the bond markets teetering, but they just keep pumping up the bubble bigger. There is so much to get into today with Gerald Salente of TrendsResearch.com. Gerald Salente is an American trends forecaster, publisher of the Trends Journal, business consultant, and author, and makes predictions about the global financial markets and other events of historical importance. Salente has described himself as a political atheist and a citizen of the world. He's appeared on everything from the Today Show to Good Morning America to Oprah Winfrey, CBS, uh, NBC Nightly News, Russia Today, Alex Jones Show, you name it, TrendsResearch.com. And boy, you read his uh, spring issue, it's been on a while, and it's, it's just spot on. Summer one coming up soon. Gerald Salente again joins us. We have defense intelligence documents coming out, and there's all this new news here, but it's just such a big deal that our government admits in Pentagon reports that our government set up Al-Qaeda and ISIS in Egypt and in Syria, and now they want to, quote, open bases back up to fight them. But you watch, it'll be to just keep them in this new enclave. They're, they're splitting Iraq up right now. They don't run ISIS or Al-Qaeda. They funded them, they turned them loose. Now they're going to keep them in that area. Keep them in that zone. That's Saudi Arabia's reward for being behind 9-11 with the criminals in our government. Now the media frames that as I'm not saying there's not radical Islamists. There absolutely are. And whereas Al-Qaeda, the old Al-Qaeda was mainly synthetic, this new ISIS, they allowed them to recruit for years worldwide, is a bunch of idiot bots recruited by globalist intelligence agencies to be run by their psych warfare controllers who poses imams. And they have Saudi Arabian <laughs> and Turkish and NATO money. And it just came out two weeks ago that the jihadis are putting out videos threatening info wars, official Al-Qaeda, ISIS. I'm proud of that. I'm very proud of that. Joe Biggs is very proud of that. Uh, and they admit we're hurting their recruiting, and they're telling their people, do not listen to the American pig. We are not run by them and jihad for us. Yes. Because you see, the truth is hitting them hard, so these teenagers and others understand that they're setting up the Middle East to be destroyed. They're setting it up for a clash of civilization. So I've kind of set the table for Gerald Salente. I'll be throwing a lot of wild cards at him today, but Gerald... You're probably scrambling around with your stacks of articles and documents, but I remember you obsessively writing, uh, actually five, six years ago, but the last three intensifying about going to war with Russia mainly and the preparations for that and why they want war to basically be the smokescreen for an economic implosion so they don't get blamed. Now that it's all happening, I don't hear you talk about it that much. Uh, so, so, so break down why you saw that coming and where we're going. Well, it, talking about it, you know, we just sent out a, uh, a trends this week, just today. It went out, and it's about the Middle East. It's, it's exploded. The world, the, world, the world is at war. And you briefly mentioned it when you talked about Saudi Arabia. You want to talk about some radicals, how about those Wahhabis, huh? Aren't they wonderful? Hey, how come you don't hear all these people like, Samantha Powers and Hillary Clinton and Susan Rice and Condoleezza Rice and all of these women that claim that we should be in Afghanistan because of the way they treat women so terribly. 
but they have lockjaw when it comes to Saudi Arabia. I mean, the women aren't even allowed to drive a car, can't leave the country without permission from their husband, and on and on and on. They have no rights at all, but they're quiet about that because it goes back to what you're saying about supporting these radical fundamentalists. Because among the most radical are the Saudis. Hey, Alex, you know how they love to show those pictures of ISIS beheading a guy every now and then? Yes. What are the Saudis up to now already? It's only a half a year, and they broke last year's record in beheadings. They're up to about 88 now. And it's what they're beheading people for, uh, talking bad about the Prophet Muhammad or whatever. And look, if that's their country, a hellhole, they can do it. I don't want it exported here. And the left gets up there, Gerald, as you know, and says, we have to get rid of free speech because it might offend somebody. That's the whole point. I'm not out insulting Muhammad. I'm not out trying to troll the Muslims. But at the same time, if somebody, if some preacher wants to do it, it's their right. Because the minute they take their right, they take Gerald Salente's right. Yeah, again, and going back to this, though, with these Saudis, you know, they're behind a lot of this destabilization. Yes. They're the ones, the Arab Little League, with the others that started the war in, in uh, Libya. They're the ones that are overthrowing Assad. You mentioned Turkey, and now Erdogan uh, faced a defeat in Sunday's election in Turkey because the people there are tired of getting involved in these wars, particularly with Syria. And here's the big one. And this is what today's trends this week that just went out is about. It's not making the news and it's going to spread throughout the Middle East. The Saudis are slaughtering Yemenis on a daily basis. Bombing the place, it's the poorest country in the Middle East being bombed by one of the richest countries. And, and one of the, the princes United gave him a hundred and something Bentleys to the pilots calling them brave heroes, bombing towns with no, with no anti-aircraft guns from 30,000 feet. I mean, that'd be like me stepping on a frog and giving myself a medal. And me being the United States feeding you with everything that you need to crush them. So we have our Assistant Secretary of State over in Riyadh bragging that we're set, they're setting up coordination centers and cells to do reconnaissance, to do intelligence, to do refueling, and to assist them with the military industrial complex to supply Saudi Arabia with everything it needs to slaughter these people. Now, this is why it's so big. When do you remember in our lifetime that the Saudis have launched a war against another country? Never. Never. So what they're doing is they're one of the largest arms buyers in the world. And now they're putting those arms to work. That's right. Well, oh, I thought of that. They've been stockpiling and are estimated to be, what, fifth or sixth in the world for arms stockpiling. I'd forgotten that. And I guess now they're expending all those. I mean, they have a hell horde of weapons, don't they? Exactly. So now, if you're a, a Yemeni and your family's just been wiped out, oh, and by the way, you have about four million of you guys working in the Saudi oil fields. You think you're going to seek revenge so what we're saying is get ready for the counterattacks. The, the prostitutes, the media whores, they'll call it terrorism. It's getting even. That's so right. They're going to call the Shiites responding to be exterminated. And I'm not trying to lionize the Shiites, but compared to the Wahhabist, they really are the underdog and, and are always being attacked. And now when they strike back, they're going to be called terrorists, is what you're saying. Exactly, because what they're going to start doing is they're going to start launching attacks on Saudi oil fields. Guaranteed. It's already beginning to happen. It's not making the American news. Number two, or the Western news. Number two, they're going to attack the, quote, royal family. I love how they give these names. Like, what are we, six years old? A royal family. You know what happened, don't you, Alex? A princess kissed a frog, and the frog became a king, and they're royal. Who's making this crap up? It's a dictatorship that was put in place 
following the breakup of the Ottoman Empire after World War I, as you well know, and your listeners do, with the Sykes-Picot plan. There was no Saudi Arabia. There was no Iraq. They made these countries up and put dictators in to run the joints, and now it's beginning to collapse. Why this is so important in Yemen? When the retaliation happens against Saudi Arabia, it's going to start spreading. It's going to go into Bahrain. It's going to go into Qatar. It's going to go into the United Arab Emirates. It's got the, the Middle East is already in flames. Oh, and our commander in chief, Obama should be brought up on charges of treason. He has lied about everything that he said when he was campaigning as the candidate Obama. But you remember that, you know, this was the guy that was going to get rid of the Patriot Act, close Guantanamo, and most recently, our liar in chief last September, when we were going to save them Yazidis on the mountain, and I'm not going to put no boots back on the ground. The boots are flying back into Iraq. One lie after another. And you predicted that. You said we'd put troops back in. Here's the headline today. U.S. prepares plans for more troops, new bases in Iraq officials. And watch, they're going to split the country in three parts and claim they've made a peace deal with the new caliphate down the road, which is what the West planned all along. And again, it's out of control. It has been for centuries. This whole Prophet Muhammad thing with the Shia and the Sunnis is going on since he died. Yeah, and for those that don't know, the Shiites say that you've got to have a genetic line to Muhammad to be a um, basically a priest. Uh, and the others say, no, anybody can be. Uh, and, of course, that group's the majority, 80%. About 19% uh, are Shiite and another 1% are uh, kind of these subgroups, Alawites, Zoroaster, Muslim subgroups. Uh, but the, they hate each other just absolutely more than some of the radicals hate the West. And, and I see the West trying to start a Shiite-Sunni um, civil war. Looks like they're doing a pretty good job. That's exactly it. They're creating destabilization in the entire area. They're pitting one against the other. And the people are the losers. You look what's going on in Syria. Syria wasn't bothering anybody. And you remember, oh, this is what I love, too. With the cover of the Trends Journal, we call it the presidential reality show. Liars, crooks, freaks, and fools. You look at Hillary Clinton now. This is the woman responsible for the overthrow of Gaddafi. And you remember that famous clip of her on CBS News asking how did she feel when they found out he was dead. And here she is. We came. We saw he died. He, anyway, going back to the, the fallacy of this whole campaign and what they're doing, now she's playing an Obama. She's playing Miss Progressive. She's playing peace and love. She's playing we're going to help the little peoples. On and on and on. In the meantime, and as Obama did as well, they keep Pushing for more war. And I'm sick of this term that they use. Oh, no, these aren't combat troops on the ground. These are advisors. What does everybody have? Attention deficit disorder? That's what they call them in Vietnam. What are other big areas you're looking at right now? Uh, other developments? The big one is what's going on in China. You look at the oil imports that are going on there, they're down over 15%. You look at their export and import trade, down both of them. China is in a bubble. But here's what's going on. You, you talked about the volatility in the bond markets. There's volatility in the oil markets. You're seeing swings on the equity markets in the Shanghai Index whether it's the DAX in, in, in Europe, you're seeing 3 and 5% swings daily. There's total volatility. The only way this market has been propped up is by this cheap money, and they have no way out. You know, we had a conference here last week, 
One of the guest speakers was Nomi Prince, who, as you well know, was the author of uh, All the President's Bankers. As it would have it, just two days before she came here to Colonial Kingston, she was a keynote speaker at the Federal Reserve meeting with the World Bank and the IMF and the Federal Reserve. And here she is on a tape, and they'll be made available at the conference saying they don't know what they're talking about. Well, Gerald, I'd love to air some of that and then put a plug at the end to get the full interview. But for folks that don't know, Nomi Prince was a managing director at Goldman Sachs. Uh, she worked under the head of Goldman Sachs and back in you know 2002 or whatever, couldn't be part of it anymore because of what she saw coming. And that's huge that she was a keynote speaker at a Federal Reserve major event because we even have major Federal Reserve uh, sub chairman in Dallas and Kansas City sounding like Gerald Salente, sounding like uh, others. So it really shows people in the system are worried. That is huge that they had her uh, address the Federal Reserve. And she said what she wanted. She said, you know who I am and I'm going to say what I feel like. She said what happened was that the, the reason it went over so well was that the opening address just before her was from a cardinal. And the cardinal said that the bank should be doing more to help the people and help the poor. So he kind of set the framework for her to come out, blasting away. And what a dynamo she is. And then we had a Q&A afterwards, and her and I both went on and talked about the same issues. But the bottom line of all of this is, is that at the top, they don't know what they're doing. They have no idea. They're guessing at this. There's never been such a thing as quantitative easing. That's right. We're in a total la-la land of experimentation. And how long can it keep going? I mean, we know, as you predicted, the real collapse globally for real people started a few years ago. Uh, we had you know 0.2 growth. Uh, we know that's cooked numbers. Ron Paul agreed that it's probably 3% negative. That's a depression. But they paper over it with this fake service economy and all these baubles, but even that's starting to implode. Well, again, look at the numbers coming out now with the, with, with, in the housing market. After all of this cheap money, it's still no great deal out there. It's, you know, they're building half of what they did during the boom. They talk about the rebirth in manufacturing. Again, another Washington uh, White House lie. You know, you have since 2007, you know, manufacturing is down over 3%. And some 3 million jobs in manufacturing have been lost. And where are they made up? Oh, they're made up in healthcare, ambulatory services, jobs that pay nothing. Here's the facts. You go from when the crash happened to now, 95% of all the wealth gained during that period in the United States went to 1%. I'm not making that number up. It's a fact. While the income of the average person uh, the, the median household income is even now below 1999 levels. There is no recovery. It's only enriching the rich. So when is it going to explode or implode? I would have thought three years ago. We had forecast that we're going to raise interest rates in March of 2014. Who in their right mind would have ever believed that they would keep these, rec these interest rates, 0% interest rates going on for 90 months. And you saw what happened back in Switzerland and in Germany just a couple of months ago. They're selling 10-year bonds that pay negative interest rates, which means you buy the bond and get less money back under the big lie of deflation 10 years later. So this is all a game that, and here's what we're saying, and that's what this, week, this week's trends is about, that the Middle East could be the kind of catalyst that blows these markets to pieces. And that's the outside geopolitical event. Everybody should be watching closely what's going on in Yemen because the prostitutes aren't reporting it and the United States is a part of it. Let me ask you this question. And we've talked about this forever, but now it's in The Guardian, The New York Times. Everywhere, the elites are buying underground bunkers, safe houses. They're moving to New Zealand. Uh, I knew a lot of Hollywood folks six, seven years ago were telling me, you know, we think the U.S. is going to collapse. That's the inside word. Big producers, billionaires moving. Israel, 
all their billionaires have left and moved out. What do the elite know the public doesn't know? Why are they so scared? You know, there was a, uh, in Bloomberg yesterday, there was a fellow from South Africa. I believe he's the head of Cartier. Um, Jason, I think, report. He came out and said he's worried about total social unrest because of inequality. Yeah, Johan, that was his first thing. Exactly. And this is a guy saying, and he's in South Africa, so he's really feeling. And that's what's going to happen. You know what I say. When people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose. Let's talk about that when we come back and ways to protect ourselves and other important news you're looking into. Gerald Salente is our guest. Find his excellent website, trendsresearch.com, and subscribe to his amazing quarterly publication and other goodies at that website and support. Hardcore liberty-based trends on media the affecting the destiny of the planet than InfoWars and the array of amazing minds and guests we bring you. And one of those chief amongst them is uh, Gerald Salente, trendsresearch.com. You need to support the good guys so he can continue and expand and do more, which you've been doing. Become a member, get his free trends updates, or sign up, get the quarterly, and get more of their exclusive material that it costs money to put out, and get the Trends Journal quarterly sent to you at trendsresearch.com. Okay, going back to Gerald Salente, um, who again is doubling down on America, he went and bought land there in New York where the country started, Colonial Kingston. He's having conferences. He's making the news. He's doing international media. He's doing domestic media. He's reaching millions every week. He's doing his own daily show, uh, video blog. He's taking action. Will he save the world? No. But together, we can bring back a renaissance, and that's what he's been talking about. The globalists admit they uglied up architecture. They uglied up clothes. So we would lose respect for ourselves. They, they have the CIA fund ugly art. They've done it scientifically. It's declassified. Are they going to be successful suppressing humanity, Gerald Salente? No. And if every, you know, there was a great quote from Rand Paul right after he uh, announced that he was running for president and he was being interviewed on NBC. And the host asked him if he always wanted to run for president. He said, no, you know, he said, I wasn't always on his mind. He said, but, you know, I hear from the guys that are running out there that you hear from they wanted to be president, run for president since they were in the eighth grade. And that's what you have. As I say, the people that are running the show. You said it a hundred times on this show, thousands on your own. They want to be the people running things since they were kids. That's not who you want. You want a George Washington or an Eisenhower that doesn't want the job. And just as you couldn't stand these guys that wanted to be, and women, that wanted to be class president and head of student council in high school and college, you can't stand them now. And what I'm saying is, those are the people running the show. Why is everybody afraid of them? Of course it could change. There's nothing in the way to stop it other than the will and what they've done. And you've been talking about it because when you put it all in context, it's a neo-feudal society. We have a political elite, an economically privileged, and we the little people. You mentioned it before. All of the Forex rigging, it's a fact. All of the LIBOR rate rigging, you know, the interest rates, it's a Gold, fact. Gold, silver, it's all come out, it's, everything's rigged. It's rigged, all of, all of the, quote, missteps and misleading of the peanuts that they pay, slap on the wrist fines, not one head rolls. But look at the laws for we the little Just people. like Corzine grabbed your bank account and didn't get in trouble. That's right. Nobody's ever heard about it again. So what happens is it's a neo-feudal society. And the laws for the nobility are different than the peasants. And that's what's happened in the country. Anybody that has to deal with the government at any level, look what they do. You know, you asked me one time, it was on the last show, have I ever been harassed, you know, been treated unfairly by the police? I forgot. I wrote a whole story in the Trends Journal. I called it to pee or not to pee. I pulled off on a country road in the middle of nowhere in upstate New York. Yeah, where are you supposed to? I mean, growing up in Texas, every, you see everybody pulled over peeing in a bush. But I went in, I was going into the woods. 
I had a convertible. My top was down. It was 10 o'clock at night. I wrote the story, and I even sent the same letter that I wrote in the Trends Journal to the, to the, the court up here in, uh, in New York, where this guy started harassing me, the state trooper. Who, do, who am I looking for in the woods? And he would not let me go to the bathroom and followed me for 45 minutes. This guy harassed me. He wanted to start a confrontation. So in a neo-feudal society, don't go over that yellow line. Your signal light wasn't on when you made a turn. You had your brakes on when another car was coming at you. But still, trillions of dollars ruin the lives of tens of millions of people by foreclosing on their homes, robbing them of everything you got. And you know what you get, Alex? You get dinner at the White House. That's what you get. You, you don't do anything wrong. Stay in line. We're going to prosecute to the letter of the law because we're a neo-feudal society. And what do the prostitutes do? Those disgusting human beings, those media whores, I'll tell you what they do. Hey, you see what happened with FIFRA? I'm saying to myself, what's a FIFRA? Why is this thing on the front pages? Oh, I'll tell you why. Because people are into sports. Oh, and you know what, Alex? We're going to have our attorney general who's letting all the slimesters that are stealing from us that do nothing. We're going to go prosecute people in another country. And you know why, Alex? Because over a 24-year period, they stole up to $150 million. $150 million over 24 years. That's a second of stealing by the banks in the neo-feudal United States. That's what's going on. We are being pushed into a, hey, you think I'm making it up? Every time you see the president, the secretary of this or that, they got a plane, that's these 747s and red carpets and saluting everywhere. It's the nobility. Other news items. I mean, there's so much. What do you make of Bilderberg and a six-mile security perimeter threatening to arrest press if they step across an invisible line? There's not even fences up. They just say, don't come in here as if everybody's read the newspaper or we're going to put you in jail for two weeks. Uh, they're flipping out on our reporters, and here are a bunch of known criminals meeting in secret to set policy. I think it's good news, though, that these shadow government organizations are being exposed. It's good news for the people. And again, I want to also pick up on what you said. It's very important for every, what can people do? They need to support, they need to buy the products that you're selling. You're putting out quality products that are going to improve people's lives. Oh, and by the way, that's another one of the big trends in the Trends Journal, longevity. And, and so when we're talking about, am I putting information out? They need to support us because you're right, it is big news. Because I remember learning about the Bilderbergs Back, you know, in the early 1980s, when there was this newspaper, I think it was Liberty Lobby, that they ended up putting out of business, that this wonderful attorney I knew in, in Rhinebeck started turning me on to these things, an older cat. And now it's become common. But you ask me, what do I think about what they're doing, how they're cordoning off the area? They're the nobility. You, that's the way you protect the nobility. And that's what I'm trying to say. It's up to the people now to really do something. The power is in our hands. And if the people would only understand that, they, would, they wouldn't bow down to authority. They wouldn't applaud freaks that show up and call themselves candidates. And I'm sick of these presidential candidates talking tough. I mean, this Lindsey Graham. You know, what he's going to do, what a thug Putin is. What is he going to go over there and hit him with his handbag? I mean, come on. Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz, these guys couldn't fight their way out of a paper bag. And they all talk tough, and they're talking tough to get our people killed and murder other millions. So what are the big trends? The trends on what people should do and how to prepare, and I don't give financial advice. You're seeing the volatility in the markets. You're seeing in the bond markets, you're seeing it in the oil markets. You're seeing it in the equity markets. 
I'm still in gold. And the other things, what, where do you see the big fears coming from? How many more scarce do we have to have? Oh, this month it was eggs. A couple of months ago it was pork. <laughs> clean food. It's the, and clean water. And all the implements that make that happen. Self-sustaining. Those are the areas to look at. And the biggest, the biggest right now as we see it, just to put this into perspective, they say that humans were created without getting into, you know, I don't know when, but they say 100,000 years ago. It took from 100,000 years ago to 1900 to put 1 1.6 billion people on the planet. In 100 years, we've added almost 6 billion people. There's not enough stuff out there. There's not enough resources in terms of clean food and clean water to support the planet. Those are the things to look into. And particularly, you saw the new study that just came out about the obesity rates ballooning worldwide. And hey, we are the exceptionals here in America. We're number one. So where are the trends? The trends are all in this area, particularly with an aging baby boom population that's global. How are they going to age healthy? And it's not going to be medicine. It's going to be the mind. So, for example, if you're feeling down, you haven't made it in life, you're trying to start a new one, wouldn't it be nice to go to a longevity center where you could get in shape physically, emotionally, and spiritually? Learn how to create the future you haven't done before because your life is really when you were talking about the founding fathers. They weren't kids. They were adults. They were the elderly. They were the ones that were respected. The markets for longevity centers, the markets for aging healthy, the markets for building community. Oh, and then as the population ages, where are the real estate trends going to be? They're going to be on the outskirts, thriving metropolises in those small cities that went down a bit when the suburbs came in, but now we're going to rejuvenate because as you get older, you don't want to drive anywhere. You go to Florida and you say only lunatics could have invented this joint. There's no mass transportation, no rail. Yeah, they got buses. You see all these old people, all you see is that George Carlin joke or Father Guido Sarducci, where you don't see the back of the head, you know? These old people driving these cars. So that's not the way to go into the future. So the future has a lot of opportunities, and the United States still has the greatest opportunity, as I see it, of any country in the world. Absolutely. Now, when we come back, I want to talk about the presidential reality show that you discussed in your New Trends Journal. Hillary Clinton being maneuvered in to be the president. Her chief of staff, basically, her top advisor is at Bilderberg. That means they're behind her. She's been many times before, been fined, Logan Act. It just illustrates for me, it's emblematic of how arrogant they are. Jeb Bush, Hillary Clinton, the optics of these imperial wannabe families, why not just give them crowns? What's the difference between Queen Elizabeth and Kim Jong-un? One doesn't have a crown, the other does. And as one senator said, is the presidency a crown passed between two families? Broadcasting worldwide here in the final segment with Gerald Salente. Uh, I got three children. We've got an article on Infowars.com, evil quotes by Bilderberg Group members. Most of these quotes are public that they put in books. I mean, th these are some nasty people. These are totalitarians. And they're trying to rebrand it right now. Kit Daniels' stories, excellent. Kurt Nemo's excellent. All of Steve Watson, Don Salazar, all our great reporters. I try to list them all, the show will be over. Mikhail Phelan, all the people behind the scenes, camera, TV. It, it, you know, Gnarls Barkley's song says, was I crazy because I didn't know enough or because I knew too much? I just know way too much now. I'm not bragging either. It's not hard to figure out history and what's happening. Once you figure it out, 
it's a lot of stuff. It's kind of like if you watch baseball, you learn how baseball works. I've been watching the globalists for 25 years, and man, they seem to be getting worse. They seem to be getting more reckless, more wild, more crazy. I mean, what about the Russia situation, Gerald? I mean, we opened the interview with that. I mean, they're sitting in armor. Uh, there's video of Western troops battling the Russians. That's Russian area. It's always been part of Russia off and on. It's not Iraq. I mean, the, the, the globalists couldn't hold Iraq. Why do they want to attack Russia? Russia's just trying to stabilize itself. Uh, why do the globalists have this instinct? I guess your audio was cutting out for a moment. Why do the globalists have this instinct to try to wreck everything? I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's the neocons. It's that, uh, you know, the Kagans, the Newland, or the, the, the wife of Kagan. And it's this, this sick mentality. They're, they're crazy people. And everybody's afraid to call a spade a spade. They're, they're megalomaniacs. They're psychopaths. And by their deeds, you shall know them. And, of course, everyone knows the deal that wants to know it was that when Gorbachev made the deal with Reagan was that NATO wasn't going to expand beyond the borders of where they were. And under Clinton, they started doing it, excelled under Bush. And now, of course, we have American troops in Estonia, Lithuania, the entire... Yeah, let's not forget, let's not forget, the UN admits that the Croats and the Muslims killed double what the Serbs did. They started the fight. Again, I'm not lionizing the Serbs, but they started it. We gave them a third of their country, blew up their infrastructure, their power plants, water, TV stations, and then put Al-Qaeda in charge, KLA to run. And then now, every few weeks, I read the foreign press where they go into Christian areas and murder everybody. I mean, this is just, and it was all to take out an ally of Russia. Exactly. And, it, and again, you know, it's... it's it, it, you asked about, you know, why are they doing it with Russia? And I was talking about FIFRA before. What was that really about? Russia. It's, it's really about Russia. And again, because most people know about sports, they made it a sporting issue. So that then the people that don't tune into anything, all of a sudden are tuned into something. And they know about it because it was about Russia. You go back to our spring 2014 Trends Journal... And it was about the Ukraine crisis and how we showed how they used the Sochi Olympics to lead up to the Ukraine crisis. Sure, sure. Stay there. Let's do five more minutes if you can to finish up this point. It's important because they want to isolate Russia so they can then point at them and say, look, they're totally isolated when they kick them out of G7. And, 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 and then now take away their World Cup so they can't have anything for their economy. I mean, it is economic warfare, as Ron Paul has said. It is an embargo. Five more minutes with Thank the trends for forecaster, Gerald Salente. Stay with us. Visit GCNlive.com today. You were getting into this Russian situation. It's just cr crazy is the word. I keep overusing it. it. It just shows an arrogance, a bravada, a chutzpah. Uh, do you agree with me that it is getting worse? They are getting more insane, or is it just we know more about it now, Gerald? No, they're more insane. Because smart people would do this. You made the point about, look, they can't win in Iraq and Afghanistan. Libya is a mess. You're going to beat the Russians. I mean, Napoleon couldn't pull it off. Hitler launched the largest military offensive in world history, and he couldn't do it. And it'll be the end of life. It'll be what, what Einstein said. I don't know how the Third World War will be fought. But the fourth will be fought with sticks and stones. Invading Russia is, would be like invading the U.S. Everybody's going to fight. Exactly. And it'll be, it'll be annihilation. And so the neocons think, and the military-industrial complex, by putting more uh, weapons on the Russian border, they won't be able to retaliate. They're out of their mind. And, and again, going back to how they're using the propaganda, they use this FIFRA example I said when we wrote about in the Trends Journal back a year ago how they used the Sochi Olympics. You remember, don't get on a plane to go there. They got toothpaste bombers, I tell you. Oh, and those Black Widow bombers, they're there too. And you know what else, Alex? The water is all yellow. And they shoot stray dogs and hate homophobes. By the time the Winter Olympics began in Sochi, 57% of Americans believe there would be a terror strike, and the ratings of America's attitude toward Russia was at a 1993 low. They're using the propaganda 
and disgusting human beings that are the prostitutes and the media whores because they get paid to put out, keep putting out those lies. What was Russia's so crime? Arresting all the Rockefeller and Rothschild banker fronts that came out in court and kicking them out? I mean, what was Russia's big crime? I mean, I guess not accelerating their population decline, uh, having pro-family events. I mean, what did Russia do that made them so mad? It's, it's Russia is a threat because of these sick people that believe that the United States is going to be the superpower around the world. And they just don't want to have any competition. They, you read their work. It, it, they should be in an insane asylum. Speaking of which, you heard Rumsfeld come out about how now, you know, he's not so sure about Iraq. And, you know, it wasn't good to try to export democracy. Who is he talking about? This is the little clown that lied. That he, we know where those WMDs are. They're east, they're north, they're south. You remember that. You remember him coming out that the world is better off without Saddam Hussein. And then he said that he never said that. Then he said he never said they were north of Tikrit. Oh, yeah, I have the quote. It's there. Oh, I know. It's He's an incredible real. liar, almost as good as Obama. or almost. And as that's what I'm saying when you ask who these people are. They're sick people, and no one wants to call them that. Instead, they call them secretary of this, president that, a prime minister, a chancellor. Well, and I want to point out a lot of folks go, good, they want America to dominate the world. No, they don't. The very same globalists are targeting small farms, small ranches, small industry. They're monopoly men. They're worldwide using American muscle to take over the planet while we get the blame. So let's be clear. They, they want to screw Russia over. They want to screw us over as well. You got it. And that's one of the stories. It's the grand manipulation. It's a takeover. It's a multinational takeover. And they've turned this country into slave landia. We talk about the, why the markets are going up. Two reasons and two reasons only. The cheap money allows companies to buy back their stock. And the other one is mergers and acquisitions. So that the big could gobble up more fire people and give them no money to work there. Isn't it wonderful? Walmart's is gonna pay $10 uh, an hour. Half of their employees are part-time workers. You're right, Gerald, thank you so much. Thank you, powerful interview.